welcome back friends so it's political parties part two so today i'll be starting with the necessity of the political party yesterday as we have studied the first part there was a question why do we need a political party but before that i explain you about four or five topics of this thing on political parties today it's the necessity of the political parties first of all we have to just imagine a situation without parties or political parties now what will happen is that every candidate in the election will be an independent candidate so they will be making no promises or they cannot make any promises to the people about the major policy changes so thus political party is required so the four points that I have written or noted down on the board you can see elected representative will be accountable then about the working of the party or inform people about the working of the ruling party then point number three they talk about the failure of the ruling party then uh, they keep contact parties maintain their contact with the common people so let me go in brief on all these four points remember this point is about the necessity of the political parties so here first of all we'll be talking in a different uh, visualization that is we'll just think what will happen if there is no political party the first point is that elected representative will be accountable to their constituencies for what they do in the locality okay now whoever is elected they are all they are all supposed to do something for the society or the locality but since there are no parties no one will be responsible for how the country runs that is what point number one says the representative will be accountable but it they will be only if there are parties but if there are no party no one will be accountable and they will never take care or they will not take the responsibility of how to run the country that is point number one now my point number two you can see it is written that working of the ruling party okay so here parties inform people about the working of the ruling party and they keep on telling people about different political activities but if there are no political parties this information will not be given okay that is why we said necessity of political parties that means we should have a political party then our point number three uh, there will be no one to talk about the ruling party if if the ruling party does not do any any major development or they don't work for the betterment of the uh, country so parties what do they do if there is a political party they always talk about the failure of the ruling party and also suggest the mass what to do so that they will be uplifted so this is this thing happen if there is a political party if there is no political party this thing will not take place point number four it is say that maintain their contact with the common people but who keeps them contact is the political party political party is a link between government and the masses so you should remember this line very properly that political party is the link between government and the mass um, we cannot approach any government officials very direct but if as i told you yesterday that if there is a, a political party member within our locality we are very free to go to him and then bring our uh, demands or put forward our demands or needs and thus we get what we need that happens when political parties are there okay and if that particular member is an independent candidate he or she may not be doing all these things very fast or in an efficient manner that is why political parties are necessary so at last we can say this is the reason why we find political parties in all the countries of the world whether these countries are big or small old or new develop or developing they all will have political parties
So after necessities, the next topic is the characteristics of political party. So there are three main characteristics of the political party. Uh, on the board, I have just written in brief the small, small points that we can remember has certain structure, means political party has certain structure. Point number two is political parties agree upon some policies and programs. Point number three, political party reflect fundamental political division. So now let me explain you in brief the first point. So this question basically may come for three marks. So the first point has certain structure. What does it mean? Every political party has a certain structure. It means how many people, how many group of uh, people organize or are in a team, working as a team. Every member who are there in this team, they are aware of their roles and responsibility in the party. So that, that in a short way, I can say that is a um, certain structure of a political party. Now we are in point number two, that is agree upon some policies. Who agrees? That's a question. That means political party. So all the members in the political party agree on some policies and programs for the society. And why do they have to agree this? So that they can promote something good for the party as well as for the country. So in order to do this, they seek to implement these policies by winning some support through election they'll come to different places they'll visit different places and then there they'll go through some of the uh, programs or the ideas they'll just start talking in front of the people they'll bring with some agendas and in that way they try to win the hearts of many people so that those people who have heard them they can cast vote in their favor that is point number two point number three I have written reflect fundamental political division what does it mean in a simple way I can say that parties okay who are there wherever I mean whichever party they belong they are a part of the society okay since they are a part of the society so they are involved in partnership partnership in what way so partnership means you know if suppose uh, they don't obey or they don't uh, welcome our demands and all okay so we have a choice in the next or the upcoming election we are not going to cast in their favor and if you don't cast in their favor they'll not get the maximum votes or they may not be able to win thus in in order to get the uh, number of seats or in order to get the majority they have to perform according to our wish or according to our demand so that is what now I'll just read up once again the last point that is political parties reflect fundamental political divisions in a society and this uh, with this we can say that they are the part of our society only so that is all about our uh, characteristics of political parties so this is my next topic demerits and advantages of political parties so you can just note down some of the points point number one indulge in corruption two is concentrate all powers in one's hand number three is divide people on the basis of caste religion etc point number four is encourage casteism now let me tell you the ideas behind this indulge in corruption here what happens some leaders of political parties indulge in corruption by doing some unfair means uh, they will capture the booth and this they do it in order to capture power so as you as i'm just telling you some examples you can just write from your side what are the uh, ways of corruption this political leaders commit into okay now we'll go to point number two in this they say concentrate all powers in one's hand now what what do we understand from this here again, the top leaders of political parties concentrate all their powers in their hand. Means they, you know, they try to bring forth all the whichever powers they can. They want to bring it in their hand so that 
they can dominate the other ministers okay uh, there is person x and this person x wants to rule over other members of his political party so what does he do he just uh, gets as much power as he can muscle and money power we used to say sometimes so they just use this strategy and they come into power and because they are in power they have more sayings and thus point number two concentrate all powers in one side now point number three divide people on the basis of caste religion and and some more things will be there etc so uh, on the basis of religion region uh, many things like that okay so now political parties they divide people on this basis why do they do this so that if according to the caste if i'm if suppose i belong to one caste and then i want to get more votes so what will i do i'll just concentrate my vision towards this people saying that i belong to your caste and then i if you cast vote for me you will get this you will get that those people who belong to other castes may not be looking after you all in that way so same way the religion they will take in region they will take in and, and this is how the a political party misuse their powers or their uh, words or we can say their status then point number four encourage casteism now what do they do here now uh, some political parties just like point number three there we have just wrote about caste religion so in point number four it is a continuation of that they encourage casteism communalism okay in order to get votes they will make two community fight together they will make two caste hate among it they'll they will try to bring some kind of hatred between two uh, caste and then there will be some fight and then in order to console them this political leader will go both towards both the parties and say okay i'll do this for you i'll do that for you so that he can get a uh, vote uh, because he is showing his sympathy for a certain caste so he will get a uh, vote from that side also he will get votes from the other side also because he is going uh, towards those people again to show some sympathy so in that way they just commit into some different type of strategies just to get votes so that is why these are the disadvantages of political parties so our next topic is how many parties should we have so under this if i just go through the book you will see that every country okay now every country has got a large number many uh, many political parties okay so this is about the other countries in india okay in india we have 750 political parties already registered okay so these are the uh, about the number how many how many political parties should we have now a question is how many so now here we have 750 already registered so this number is not the final figure it is coming up okay now in some countries like uh, okay in some countries uh, i talk like china okay now we know in china uh, what type of uh, party they have it they don't have uh, uh, polypores that many parties they have a single party okay and that is that is known as communist the only party okay communist party so i'm writing in short it's a communist party that is in china whereas if we talk about uh, some countries like america okay or in other way like USA, I'll just write it, that is better I think, USA, that is United States of America. Now they don't have many parties once again, they have, they have two party, okay, so now two party system. So question maybe here and here, what is this? Uh, one party system may known as what is this two party system may known as so they may ask you uh, the name of this party means what type of party they have okay so that you have to know I'll I'll tell you it doesn't matter then 
in our country that is i think you all know what is that in our country we have what multi party okay now when you say multi party we already understand what is that we have so many parties that sometimes we don't even know which party belongs to which uh, area so in your board exams they may ask you name this party from this uh, state okay they may they may give you for example name i'll just write tn tn is tamil nadu name six parties of tamil nadu so with the symbols so you have to learn this okay then after this we have uh, some more some more things that some parties okay like multi party we have got so if i'll just take an example this is a party again party a and some like a plus b plus c plus so these are again some parties so if this party and this party join hands together okay so now these are multi parties so but this is another type of party now if this this team and this teams they join hands together they form a party which is known as coalition okay coalition party so i'm writing in short so that uh, my space will be have anyway let me write it coalitions coalition party so these are the party system now, how many should we have it no who can answer this how many we have now once again our country okay has got 70 750 plus registered party system countries like china they have one party system and that the, the only party is a communist party in usa that is america and england okay and england they follow two party system in our country we have multi party system that is also not enough we also have this system coalition party 